Great to have you with us. 888 Good morning. This morning, it's a beautiful, beautiful morning. in the morning time for a morning show. Uh, as always, you know, there is more stuff than you can shake a stick at. I don't know why you'd shake a stick at any of it. Oh, wow. Well. I don't know what that really does. Does a, does a hockey stick qualify? Um... No, we will, you can't shake a stick at it, though. I just said there's too much, so okay. much that you can't shake a I stick at I wanted to find it. out for myself. See, you can't. You can't do it. Um, <laughs> I love this. I love this new poll that says uh, Americans are downbeat as coronavirus cases spike in many states and the economy is mired in recession. Oh, and there's protests and looting and rioting going on. Well, at least we have sports to distract us. Well, uh, no. Oh. Sorry. We really kind of don't right now. Uh, so they did a survey about whether or not you think things are going really well. <laughs> Who the heck said yes? 5% of Americans <laughs> said things are going very well. Wow. Who are these people? <laughs> yeah, things are great right now. They're going very well. Are you kidding me? This is awesome. <laughs> what? Wow. Forty percent said they're going very badly. That seems kind of low. Mm-hmm. Another nineteen percent said things were somewhat well, and thirty-six percent said somewhat badly. Most Americans said that as they look back a few months, the Trump administration wasn't ready to deal with the coronavirus outbreak when it started. Some seventy-two percent judged the administration unprepared, against twenty-eight percent who said it was prepared. I don't know if you can ever really prepare for something like this. You know, how how would you prepare? I guess you'd have plans in place on, you know, when you would shut things down or whatever. And I think they did. Well, I mean, you had the the lead guy, Dr. Fauci, mm-hmm. changing his tune every couple of days. Uh, so that means... Sure did. I mean, if you're leaning on your experts... Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, uh-huh. he was a prime example of, well, I don't know. I mean, it's not a big deal. Oh, no, you should wear a mask everywhere. Oh, no, we're good. No. Oh, no, this isn't going to really hit Americans like it is other places. Huh. Oh. Okay. Oh, yeah. And by the way, China's like, uh, yeah, there's another virus uh, headed your way. Oh, it's yeah. a pig virus this time, uh-huh. right? Yeah. Uh-huh. It's not the swine flu, though, from the past? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Or is it? Uh, No, this is, uh, you know what? I, I don't know. I don't know. I just know it's another flu. We don't need to know. It's just another indication that things are going very badly yeah. right now. Yeah. <laughs> things are not going very well. Pandemic potential, they're calling this one. Oh, good. So, yeah. Good, good, it, good, good, it, good. And it's a new one. It's a new one, by the way. Plus, there's a pandemic of stupidity in the Supreme Court. Oh. And elsewhere, too. But the Supreme Court, they did it again. That far right. Crazy, radical, yeah, yeah, yeah. conservative That's the one. court? That one. They did it again, huh? Yeah, this right-wing court. I mean, I'm a little embarrassed that they're so blatant about their conservatism. Right. <clears throat> right. Every now you know, and then throw the liberals a bone so right? it's not so obvious that you're <laughs> right? in the tank for conservatives. Because at this point, it's just like activism conservatism. That's what it is. <laughs> uh, I mean, at least uh, pretend that you're objective. Mm-hmm. So they they shot down the Louisiana abortion law five to four. Why? Because uh, Supreme Court Chief Justice John Roberts uh, voted with the liberals. Shocking. I I just, this guy sucks. Yeah, he does. He and his four more liberal colleagues ruled that the law requiring doctors who perform abortions have admitting privileges at nearby hospitals violates the abortion rights the court first announced in the landmark Roe v. Wade decision in 1973. You think landmark. they'll ever strike down Roe v. Wade? Not on your life. Mm-hmm. Not with the, not with this guy. And if it's about the life of the mother <clears throat> and it should be, you know, um, safe and, but rare, and you would mm-hmm. want a medical professional, right? Yes, Someone you would. Who could, okay. Yes, you would. Hmm. Uh, this was uh, the same... Almost the exact same case that Roberts voted ag- against uh, shutting down back in 2016. So he voted the opposite way in 2016 mm-hmm. on the Texas ruling. Mm-hmm. 
Why did he vote the other way this time? Well, they found the Polaroids between the Texas ruling and the Louisiana <laughs> ruling, I believe. I mean, I'm starting to believe that. His excuse is, ah, uh, well, we got to go with our, we got we to gotta uphold our old decision. You don't need to go with precedent. Nope. You go with what's constitutional and what's not. Why is that such a hard concept I for conservatives? The Supreme Court Chief Justice doesn't seem to understand it. Precedent is not what the Supreme Court is supposed to be ruling on. What they're supposed to rule on is the United States Constitution. That's what they rule on. Is the law constitutional or isn't it? And he didn't think it was in, uh, or he thought it was in 2016. He doesn't apparently. Well, he's actually, he still does. <laughs> and he admitted that. Yeah, we just, we ruled, I, I got to be consistent and... The only thing this guy is is worried about is legacy and what liberals are going to say about him when he's done. Seriously. That's the only thing he cares about. I mean, segregation is still a thing. Slavery is still a thing. I mean, if if we're going to just stick with case law and and, and how mm-hmm. things have been ruled before. Exactly. I, um, yeah, there have been some pretty bad Supreme Court rulings that we didn't say, well, we ruled that other way on Jim Crow last time, so we have to now. President. <laughs> There's precedent. Precedent to keep whites and blacks yeah. apart. Yeah. So yeah. How to uphold tradition and whatnot. <laughs> and then when they should go by precedent. Yeah, we're going to change the whole thing on God being in our public schools. Can't have that now. Now we can't have that. <laughs> well, okay. I understand. I really... I mean, think about this. It's unbelievable. We, we, have, we have liberal Supreme Court justice who <laughs> o- openly talk about looking at other countries' constitutions yeah. for, to, to guide their decisions. Right. We can't get our justices to look at our constitution to make decisions. Help us. It's almost like they agree with Ginsburg on it's 200 years old and it's yeah. I- irrelevant now. That seems to be what she was saying when she was talking about the newer constitutions. There's <laughs> so much... So much more legitimate to look to when you're constructing a constitution as a new country than ours is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Her, her favorite was uh, South Africa. South believe, Africa. Right? Yeah. Because they guarantee so many things for people. Right. I want to be guaranteed to be left the hell alone. I mean, that's really the only guarantee that I need from you, please. And then before her, I remember 20 years ago, it was shocking then. Now it's just whatever. I forgot who it was. I don't know if it was Breyer or somebody was saying, we need to be looking at the constitutions of Europe for our uh, uh-huh. guidance. Yeah, I remember that. The he- why? Yeah, how, why would you? You shouldn't be looking at anything any other country does. It ha- th- That has no bearing at all on what a Supreme Court is supposed to be uh, judging their decisions on. Seriously. I mean, and, and, and so, so the Supreme Court with their... Uh, with their cases that they decide, mm-hmm. and with what is happening in communities and states around this nation with the lockdowns and the masks and all this stuff. I mean, what purpose does the Constitution serve anymore other than, oh, time for another election? Mm-hmm. Like, seriously, is that all that it's good for now? Is just a calendar? All it is is a road bump now. I mean, every once in a while, somebody will mention it, and then somebody else just drives oh, over the that. top of it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, but let's just drive over it. That, that sounds familiar. <laughs> Don't worry yeah. about it. Yeah, it's, you know, that thing's old. Seriously, what practical purpose does the Constitution serve in 2020? Almost none now. Yeah. And and I can't wait for later on when we play the Andrew Cuomo thing. He, he actually wants uh, Donald Trump to be a king now, apparently. Andrew oh, Cuomo, if you okay, can imagine good. that. Uh, huh. So that'll be fun to get to later. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cuomo. Well, Cuomo has done such a great job as well, he's the model. governor. He's a New he's York's a model been the model for, uh, for what we should be doing with coronavirus and all the governing in every state. Because what a job he's done. What a job. What a job. You know, that decision to send sick people to nursing homes was awesome and only cost, I don't know, thousands and thousands of lives. I mean, think of the decision. Not millions. It didn't kill millions of people. <laughs> I, I, that's like giving guns to bad guys. It is. It's and, unbelievable. And Operation Fast and Furious. Ah, we'll just track them. Well, yeah, let's put whatever. let's put people with a, a disease uh, mm-hmm. in a nursing home where with the- our most vulnerable population. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a good idea. Let's do that. <laughs> I don't even. It doesn't. It doesn't. I mean, these make meetings where these all. things are decided. Yeah, crazy. Does anybody object? Ah, you know what? Maybe putting people with this uh, 
global pandemic virus in with the population that's most vulnerable isn't a good idea. And we know it's mostly them that are dying. Right. So. Nope, I think that's no, our. No, that's a good idea. That's our policy. Make where it, else would you put them? There's nowhere else, really. <laughs> it's incredible. It's really incredible. All right. Triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three. Also, add Pat Unleashed on Twitter. Some uh, tweets to take care of from after the show yesterday. Uh, from Sitting Duck. Uh, lots of Pat heads pointed out. Uh, yeah, so oh, I, I, I we just were pulled this one. I just pulled this one. So many. We were wondering uh, yesterday about the demise of a television show. You know, it's heading uh, off the air. Mm-hmm. When certain things occur, like the eight-year-old neighbor from the cousin from down the yeah, street yeah, yeah. starts coming over and hanging out all the time. Or when, and I couldn't remember the actor's name, Yeah, Ted McGinley yes. shows up. <laughs> there Love he is. Boat. There that. he is. <laughs> and Scintillating Duck was saying that uh, the one show that he didn't kill was right there, Married with Children. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> but he didn't, I don't think he was added to that later, was he? That he was part of that from the beginning, I think. Uh-huh. Wasn't he the neighbor? Oh, the whole time from the beginning, he, yeah, yeah. He was okay. married to. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was Mr. Darcy. Right. Yeah, from the beginning, right? Maybe that's yes. the key. Maybe yes. that's the key. Maybe See? that's the key. He's yeah. got to be on from the start. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, I got uh, the orange and and purple sour patch kids. Oh, Natalie said you we those. Yeah, added to the uh-huh. the bras stash. <laughs> Uh, Michael NP1701 tweets, if you or someone you know has developed digestive issues such as ulcerative colitis from eating excessive amounts of Sour Patch Kids, is that a possibility? We're here to help. I hope that's not possible. He's worried now, y'all. Call 1-800-MY-ULCER and let the Flamaski group hear your case. <laughs> He's already been eating them this morning. Oh, my God. That was your breakfast, I, just, I noticed. Yeah, it was. <laughs> It was my late breakfast yesterday, and it was my early breakfast uh, today. I just can't, I can't <laughs> get enough of them. Also, uh, Pat had Stephen messing around with Siri mm. yesterday. Yeah, lobster bite. Yeah, what do you got here? Stephen? So he was he was asking Siri, "Do white lives matter? Do blue lives matter? Yeah, so, do all lives matter?" And so we have all the responses there. So uh, what's the first one? Do white lives matter? Uh, white lives matter is both a white supremacist <laughs> slogan. Okay. Adopted after, and then it cuts yeah, off there. Uh, yeah, just, I mean, we got the images up there. It just it tells you enough right there. The ADL says, nope, White Lives Matter is a racist slogan. And then he asks, do all lives matter? And then, uh, Jeez. you know, your little uh, Apple helper there says, uh, what, all lives all matter? All lives matter is often used in response to the phrase Black Lives Matter, but it does not represent the same concerns. Okay, well. Huh, all, all right. right. So then what if you ask it so if then, Blue Lives Matter? Yeah, Blue Lives Matter. Uh, in essence, blue lives cannot possibly equate to, and then it cuts off, yeah, yeah, though. So, yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. So, uh, uh, blue lives do matter. That's the problem. The Washington Post. Uh-huh. Hmm. Okay. okay. So, do black lives matter? <laughs> yes. Very cut and dry. Black lives matter. I mean, she talks in circles and uh, that... eats around the bush with all the others, but no, no. Black lives, straight up. Yes, black lives matter. I think I want to hear the rest of those answers. We should ask. Our, I wonder if they've changed that now. Well, no, I just sometimes think sometimes they change that. Did you check it out? No, I just think it's a Google search that it gives you, and you know. So she doesn't actually answer. She just here's what I found on Black Lives Matter or right. All Lives Matter. Right, right, right. But if you ask it, cut and dry. Unreal. Do Black Lives Matter? Yes. Of course. What kind of question is that? Next thing you're gonna ask me. Is life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness in the Constitution anymore? Mm. You probably wouldn't get a yeah, definitive answer yeah, you're to right. that no, either. That doesn't work. Uh, also, we got a late. Uh, oh, this is fun. Video of a lady trying to place her order from a McDonald's uh, parking lot. This is kind of fun. Um, <laughs> she she might not be in the best place to be placing her order, but uh, watch here, this. Here she is. There she is. She's looking at this sign. There's a sign at the parking spot. And it's curbside pickup, and the <laughs> thing says... She's pushing buttons on the sign. She's pushing on the fake that, phone that, that's on the sign. She's checking under her glasses. Oh, there's a number up there. What do I... Hello? What, <laughs> what am I it? supposed to push here? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Nothing, Puddin. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah, it's not a... <laughs> it's not a device. That's, it's just a sign. Yeah, that's... Uh, just a sign. That's kind of fun. <laughs> that may not be the... The, the most uh, clueless person we have. She's today. one of the five percent that said, oh, everything's very, going very well right now, really very well." She's one of those people. 
Uh, <laughs> all right. Let me tell you about Simply Safe. What's the number one sign of a bad home security system? A home security system that's so complicated, you never use it. This is exactly the type of security system Simply Safe has spent a decade fighting against. They believe it simple is safer, and that's exactly why Simply Safe is the home security for right now, when feeling safe at home has never been more important. It was designed to be easy to use, easy to set up, and it protects your whole home 24-7. You can order online with just the click of a button, open the box, place the sensors, plug it in, and your home's protected around the clock. You don't need a technician or salesperson to come and disrupt things in your house. So great. It's so easy. Even I could install it. Um, so that's, you know, it's a pretty easy system to install if I could install it. Hmm. Head to simplysafe.com slash unleashed and get free shipping and a 60-day money-back guarantee. Plus, you're going to save a lot of money on the monitoring fee. I mean, ours was up to like $60 before we switched. 15 bucks a month? A little bit better. <laughs> Quite a bit better. Simplysafe.com slash unleashed to make sure uh, they know that, that our show set you. Simplysafe.com slash unleashed. Pat Gray Unleashed. Ah, from the unintended consequences file. Yeah, our next problem to come has been uh, tweeted out here. Um, this is just, <laughs> I love check this. out this picture of our next problem. All right. Now we got masks have hit the big time. They're, uh, they're polluting com- the washing oceans. up, <laughs> washing up on beaches already. <laughs> Where did that come from? How are we, who's putting their mask in, in the ocean mm-hmm. just, or into a river that feeds into the ocean? I, I. I mean, that's unbelievable. Already, this guy catches all of these masks washing up. That's disgusting. Yeah. Really sad. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, but, you know, the same people who are wearing the masks are super big environmentalists. So, hmm. you know, that, that was just accidental. <laughs> I'm sure they didn't mean to. Yeah, the wind blew them away. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Something like that yeah. happened. Well, they threw it in a river and thought it just stayed in the river. <laughs> Wait, they don't? <laughs> No. Well, what, no, what happens? Don't. To, uh, Sometimes the river flows somewhere, you know, and mm-hmm. empties into some somewhere else. It sounds like math. maybe a larger body of water. It's really know. complicated. Sounds I don't like even math. understand I'm it. Not there. I don't even get it. Also, Democrats won't let Republicans speak in coronavirus hearings <laughs> okay. if they don't wear masks. All right. That sounds <sighs> like fun. Oh, somebody was uh, speaking at a coronavirus hearing. His name was uh, one Dr. Fauci. Oh, yeah. You should see what he was doing when he was uh, speaking at the old... Uh, no, I think we're going to see it. Uh-huh, yeah. Look, watch let's, this. let's do oh, see Oh, cameras it. are off. Okay. Okay, off comes the Cameras are off, and I'm just going to... I'm just going to stand here and <laughs> breathe the fresh air. I'm going to... Wait a minute. And first of all, your tie is tucked into your huh. pants, sir. Just want to point that out. And you're not even oh. talking to anyone. You're just literally... I don't understand. He's just standing I mean, there. What's the purpose other after than... After pulling down his mask, and now yeah. he's infecting everybody in the right, room. Right, right. Thank you. But the cameras are off, Pat. And so when the cameras are off, then the mask is yeah, irrelevant. He, during the hearings, he wore the mask religiously, right? He yeah. didn't He didn't ever pull it down or take it off so, or so, adjust it like that. Yeah, so it's my understanding... <laughs> I love how long he stands there, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. It's my understanding <laughs> that the mask only works when cameras are on you. <sighs> Uh, in your, in your this is why we say, broadcast. you know, I, I don't like to have to say it, but I do. This, but this is why we say to him, shut up, Fauci. Fauci, shut up. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, guys. So bad. The hypocrisy is just it's it's amazing. Isn't it fun? Yeah, it's fun. It's that's the fun. good that's a good word for it. It's really fun hypocrisy. Because it's uh it just brightens your day to see that it gets worse every single day. Well, you Doesn't better it? be wearing your mask. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Why? Well, he's Dr. Fauci. He can come and go as he pleases. Oh, I see. Right. So it's but do as you, I say, not as right. I do. And we know he's not infected because he's too elite to and be f- infected ever. <laughs> uh, 
right? Yeah, oh, exactly. The elite people can't be infected. Yeah, like, like the governor of New York. Or the prime minister of England. <laughs> <laughs> they, they can't get it. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm ah! telling you. you got to have special blood, apparently. I will say, uh, I saw something quite disturbing. Uh, either it was last night or this morning. Reading about uh, the fact that, what did they say? Five members of, is it Alabama's football team, are infected with the virus? Mm. It was it was some SEC teams and a couple of different SEC teams. Oh, it was LSU and, uh, I don't know, somebody else. <laughs> uh, and they've got multiple players with COVID-19. Oh, you got baseball guys saying that Very they're not even going to play. You got a couple of Washington Nationals, somebody else. That have just said they're going to skip the season? Diamondbacks, yeah, not playing. <laughs> it's, I, 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 I uh, man. Out, out of words. Put in your own words. So does that mean, I mean, is it enough that they're going to, they're, they're still going forward, right? As it stands now. As yeah. of now. But who knows? I mean, that this is why you have minor leagues. Just keep calling them up. I don't care. If we get down to, you know, the kids at the Little League World Series wearing your favorite team's <laughs> jersey in October, whatever. <laughs> I'm just... I bet uh, most of the kids in the Little League won't kneel for the National Anthem. So at least we'd have that going for us. Hmm. I don't know who's teaching them these days. Yeah, it's true. They will kneel too. They'll all kneel. Everybody's kneeling. Uh, I don't think there's any pro sport that is not going to kneel. I, Ooh. You know, certainly the NBA, it's it's... It's so out of control in the NBA. They're going to put Black Lives Matter on the court. Yeah. They're, they're going to, like, spray paint it, silk screen it, whatever you call it, into the court. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. So, obviously, they're going to kneel when the national anthem plays. Obviously, uh, football players are going to do the same thing in the NFL. The NFL has completely capitulated to them and have – you know, said how wrong they are mm-hmm. and how sorry they are and that you guys are really right about everything. And we love your Marxist movement. We love it. Yep. We love it. There's nothing better than Marxism. Mm-hmm. And that's why uh, we're going to donate our $10 billion a year I'm that sorry. we make. Sorry? Uh, and that's why we're going to donate it to the poor and the we're, indigent. I'm sorry. We're, were we going to... They're going to uh, redistribute all their wealth. Oh, wait, they're Hold they're on. not going to do that. Yeah, I was going to say, can we... Uh... <laughs> wait, they're not quite that committed to Marxism. Yeah, let's, let's not go to air with that plan. That was a working uh, plan. <laughs> We're going to talk that through. <laughs> that was some secretary or something that yeah. suggested that. And we're like, no, I make $40 million a year. I'm not, no, mm-mm, not doing How that. How about that private jet? You want to donate that to the cause no. so that the BLM mm-hmm, no. people can fly all over No, the... I need the private jet because that's the only way I can get around, mm-hmm. you know, from game to game. Okay. Uh, the schedules, the commercial airlines, they just don't fit me. They don't I, fit. No, they don't fit. Hmm. So, okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. Triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three. Also, I think you alluded to Andrew Cuomo's <laughs> oh, mask Andrew message. Andrew Cuomo, watch this, man. He gives a presser yesterday. The president can do two things. Wait, first, first of all, where's his sign mask? Sign an executive order right. directing everyone to wear a mask. Are you hearing this? How we're at this point as a nation? What? And we still haven't done the simple, easy, minimal step of saying you must wear a mask when you are in public. Look at this. And the president doesn't have to pass a piece of legislation, doesn't have to call the Congress. Just sign an executive order (laughs) saying wear a mask. We did it two months ago in this state. Well, Then why aren't you wearing one? Yeah, where is yours, douche? Where's, Where's your mask then, Andrew? Seriously. So wait a minute. So Andrew Cuomo wants King Trump. That's what he's saying. He wants an executive order to tell you to wear a mask? Oh, my goodness. This is, no matter where you are in the country, too. Just nationwide, whether you've got the situation under control or not, you're going to wear a mask. Yeah, that's not how federalism works, okay? And uh, fortunately, Trump's not going to do that. So, <laughs> uh, But just, interesting that, you know, as afraid they say they are of his power and... You know, the fact that right. he's a fascist. They want or him to do that? They want him to do fascistic things like that. I I should have had him pull. Sorry. I, 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 Cuomo at his little press conference, he had this like paper mache mountain. And he's like, this is uh, where we were. And now we're down here. And we don't want to go up that mountain again. And oh, gosh, it's just agonizing. So, so 
I think the worst part now of the uh, resurgence of the COVID cases and the positive tests mm -hmm. are now we get more of these um, liberal governors giving their uh, press conferences every day. And so that's going to be awesome. Well, they've seen how well the press conferences work because mm -hmm. the people love them, apparently. Yeah. They loved Cuomo, who was doing this every single day, and that's when his approval rating skyrocketed, despite the fact that so were the COVID cases. Mm -hmm. They were also skyrocketing. The deaths were skyrocketing. They had about a third of the deaths that happened in the United States happened in New York. And it was close to half between New York and New Jersey. If you added New, New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut, which are basically suburban New York areas, uh, you probably had 50% of the country's deaths in those three states. I mean, it's... And yet, because he had a press conference every day, people are like, oh, I love the job he's doing. He's doing a really good, good job. He goes on TV every day. That's he really good. He talks to me like I'm a friend. Yeah. He, he goes on TV every day. Every day. You can't do that if you're not doing a good job. He keeps it real. <laughs> Yo, all up in here. <laughs> Seriously, I, I'm... <laughs> it's so ridiculous. I just... I, people I, are stupid. I give up. You know? People are stupid. People are stupid. That's our that's our new yeah. theme for the show. And, and, People and, are stupid. And later on, uh, you know, if there's time, mm -hmm. we may have the video of the stupidest person oh, good. ever recorded All right. in the history of mankind. <laughs> Stick around. Um, meanwhile, the Chop Chaz oh, area yeah. was supposed to be you, sort of dissembled by now. Oh, I thought you were going to say Utopia. Oh, it's oh, it is Utopia. Utopia. Yeah, yeah but I, for some reason they wanted to dissemble uh, Utopia, uh, but... It's going too well. I don't think they can do, oh. just disassemble it now because it's just such a paradise. Why? What, what happened now? Uh, well, a couple of teens uh, rolled into the area and uh, were shot dead um, and mm. slammed into a barricade. <clears throat> well, one of them was dead. The 16-year-old teen okay. was killed. Uh, the 14-year-old is in critical condition. These are two teenagers. Now... The Chop Chaz security says that they they shot first. Nobody really knows, though. And uh, the police who investigated <laughs> said say. that the crime scene had been manipulated and oh, messed with. And well, so we're probably never going to know. Um, the surveillance video is from like a block away, mm -hmm. and it's looking down the street, and you can barely tell what's going on. But you hear them squeal around the corner. Have you seen this video? Not at all. You see that they, I think they're in, somebody said they were in a stolen Jeep. So they squeal around the, you hear their tires squealing around the corner and then the gunshots begin and oh. you don't know from where they're coming. Although it seems like they're all coming from the Chop Chaz area. This happened in Utopia. In Utopia night before last. Wow. Yeah. 16 year old black kid and a 14 year old black kid. And uh, I, you know, the black lives apparently didn't matter. I was going to say. Uh, in this particular the case. The Chaz security force. They didn't care. Killed them. Okay. Yes, killed them dead. Well, at least the 16-year-old. Mm -hmm, the other sure. kid's still in, for, in uh, critical condition. I just, and this is not the first. It won't be the last. Uh, unless they get a grip on this and uh, take this thing apart and let police enter back into this area mm. and protect the citizens. There's 30,000 people in that area. 30,000 people. If I'm a resident, I am so unbelievably pissed right now that uh, I'd probably be arrested mm. for the scene I would make at the mayor's office. Sure. Sure. Well, at least they still have the garden going, right? That's still uh, no. up and kicking, right? <laughs> so the, We're good. Get the food. Wait, what, what do they do? What's the city of Seattle doing? They're, they're trespassing. Bring home free vegetables. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm making enough money. Okay. So wait. So the wow. city workers come in there and just start digging up the garden? Just took apart the farm they had. I mean, that's like an in invasion. In the heart of Seattle. I thought yeah. Chaz was autonomous. Wow, that's not right. Oh my goodness. That's not Did right. Did Chaz just <laughs> surrender to uh, city maintenance workers? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> and without much of a much of an no issue. No pushback at all. No pushback. You don't hey, want fresh vegetables? Don't you like vegetables? No, actually I don't. We're throwing them away. This is where they belong. <laughs> Work. Great to have you with us. Welcome. Triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three. Short week this week. Just to give you a little thrill there. Hmm? Just four days. Mm. I mean, if you're like most normal 
people with normal jobs. Yeah. Almost all normal jobs. Well, it's going to be a great... Have the day off Friday. Just a great 4th of July, right? Uh, yep. All the fireworks everywhere. Celebrating how very well things are going right now, yeah. according to 5% of Americans. F- Man, things couldn't be better, could they? Yeah. Freedom. They could not be better. Freedom. Freedom, <laughs> freedom, freedom. Yes, indeed. Celebrating that. All righty. <clears throat> I uh, got some tweets here from the Steve 42. Can we substitute the pig virus for a tofu soy vegan virus? <laughs> Fickle squirrel. Did you say Chief Justice or Sheep Justice, John Roberts? There you go. I may need to get my ears cleaned. Mm-hmm. Bob blah, blah. Uh, Justice Roberts should quit dreaming about his legacy knowing a future cancel culture. <laughs> we'll likely put his statue down too. A great point. <laughs> if they ever built a statue to that guy, yeah, they'd pull it down five minutes after it was mm-hmm. erected. Uh, Tyler Morgan, <clears throat> so if we're going off precedent, are we throwing out Brown versus Board of Education See? and falling back on Plessy versus Ferguson? There it is. That's some uh, really cool uh, Supreme Court talk right there. Yeah, uh, it is. Yeah, right? I like that. <laughs> uh, Jeffy's 18 Spoons, I can't believe Siri, programmed by Marxist progressives, is a Marxist progressive. <laughs> <laughs> she seems like such a sweet gal. Mm-hmm. Hey, who says Marxists can't be sweet gals? Yeah, then you get to know them. Yeah, right? Hmm. Uh, I think they're just mostly misunderstood. Is frankly. that what it is? Yeah. Okay, and they need to bathe, too. From B to Bodine, between the straws and masks, the poor stupid turtles don't have a chance now. If turtles weren't so stupid, they would put straws in their noses. When I see a straw, I put it in my mouth. Straws don't belong there, but the turtles don't know why. So maybe they all deserve to I mean, that's beautiful. It is so beautiful. If that doesn't move you, you can't be moved. <laughs> oh, so Jeffy. Uh, mm-hmm. The immovable, immovable object. <laughs> the immovable object. There we go. Yeah. Who will be here uh, tomorrow mm-hmm. and Thursday. Unless he's still stuck between the moon and New York City. <laughs> I know it's crazy. Oh, yeah, it's, but it's true. It is true. It's true. Uh, quiet guy in the back. I wash restaurant sidewalks every day, and the number of masks and gloves on the ground outside is crazy. Now, I wonder where Quiet Guy in the back, maybe you could tweet to us uh, where where you live. Because I know that New York City washes their sidewalks all, all the t- every day. Every morning, they're out there washing the sidewalks. And it still does no good. And it still smells in, in like the urine. larger scheme of things. <laughs> And dung it's, every day. It's, it's just, still you know dung. what it is. It's just wet urine and <laughs> wet you. dung. That's it's what it just smells damp, like. Damp, nasty <laughs> air, which is worse than if yep. you just left it alone to begin with. Yep. But I would like to know because uh, you know everybody's wearing a mask in New York now. What's right? what's what's his name again? Uh, quiet guy in the back. Quiet guy in the back. I bet. I bet the the number of masks and gloves. Uh, and these are from, again, these are from people who are so crazy about wearing the mask and so crazy about every left-wing issue. How could you dare not dispose properly of that mask and those gloves? And by yeah. the way, those gloves are plastic. Mm-hmm. And so um thought plastic was a bad thing. Yeah. You know, and contributed to the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, which is... I don't know what eight times the size of Texas by now. Ten oh. times the size of Texas. Oh, it's got to be now. Years right? ago, it was double the size of Texas. It's got to be ten or fifteen times yeah, the size. And now. like that kid says in the song, I mean, you know, the turtles don't stand a chance. They you know, don't. Uh, they as don't. The tweeter says because yeah. not only they're going to have straws up their nose, they're going to have they're going to have plastic gloves it's on their over. ears. It's pretty much over for yeah. the turtles. Let's be it, it is. The yeah, uh, I'm away. looking up. Uh, it doesn't say where he lives. It just says. His location is Shaken Bacon, so <laughs> we're going to have to wait and see if he tweets us a location here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, got some interesting studies being done, you know, because what you find out when you talk to blacks in, the, in their community is that they're many times conservatives. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In, in their ideology, they believe the things that we believe. But they've just been so duped over time by the Democrats that they think they're progressives. When really, you're going to find that we got a lot in common and that we should really be together on these issues. 
Uh, they were just asked, do you believe there are only two genders? Biological males and females. Or are there other gender identities? Uh, in a survey of, it doesn't say, let's see, does it say how many uh, blacks were studied here or surveyed here? It, uh, let's see, yes, 1,200 registered black voters. So out of 1,200 voters, there are only two genders. 51% two genders. Mm. There are other gender identities, 41%, and I don't know, uh, 8%. 51, 41, two genders. Mm. I love that. I love that. And yet we're supposed to believe that they're so, so progressive in their thinking. No, and that's one of the things that is constantly <clears throat> coming out during this when, when you hear people um, being interviewed or, or talking about the political climate and stuff. You know, they, they don't support uh, these far left uh, <laughs> it, it, um, issues. No, they but don't. but progressives and Marxists are just using them and uh, as 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 a vessel to uh-huh. destroy these cities. Yeah, it's they're despicable. using these protests, and it's working. Yes, it, it's worked for them for sixty years. So yeah, it's a good formula for the for the Democrats. Meanwhile, uh, five black Republicans who are running for office in Baltimore won their primaries. That is so awesome. Five black Republicans. I, you have five black Republicans in Baltimore? Yes. And they won. That's amazing. So we'll see what happens when they Please. go up against the Democrat. Please. Let this the be general, a but that's pretty change. Cool. Oh, I hope that. so. And I, I, hope I love so. The, the one of the ladies uh, that won her primary when she tweeted this out. She's like, you're not going to hear about this on the news. So I thought I would uh, go ahead and that's for sure. post this for you. Uh, Harrisburg, for sure. Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Is where quiet guy in the back is cleaning sidewalks. Oh, okay. That are, they do uh, that in Harrisburg? Yeah. Huh, okay. I thought they just wallowed in their own filth in Harrisburg, but I guess not. <laughs> uh, no, that's, that's good to know. No, that's, that's good to know. I, I think you're thinking down the road in Philadelphia. <laughs> yes, that's where they do that. Uh, then we come to this black issue. Uh, they put together this, this... Man, there was a lot of these going on. A lot of these movements within the movement, like the Blackout Day... Now there's myblackreceipt.com. So you're supposed to go to black businesses and spend money oh, there. And oh. then post your receipt online. Oh, right. And then all of this money, I don't know, goes to Black More Lives Matter. More virtue signaling. That's so great. That is great. So their goal initially was $2 million. I think they raised that to $5 million because they're, mm, let's see, they're actually up, doing pretty well. No, they, they kept it. Let's Did see. they? So No, they started, I think, it. I think you were... Uh, they keep adding it. They're up to their sixth goal, which is two million, and they're at. Mm. But they're at one point four million right now. And uh, and hurry, you only have through Sunday to shop and then submit your receipt to myblackreceipt.com. Here's a video that explains the whole process. You're gonna love it. Are you ready to put your receipt where your protest is? Black no. consumers and allies, we need you to join the hashtag MyBlackReceipt movement and buy black June 19th, mm. wow. which is Juneteenth, yeah, through July is. 4th, we, we and upload your receipt. When you <laughs> okay. buy from a black-owned business, the what owners happens? are more likely to hire black, give to black uh. causes, and pass assets to black families. Uh. Buying black empowers the black community mm. to participate, one, oh, is that the community you just destroyed? Business. Yeah, yeah, it's that Two, one. They burned down that your business. Right. Just okay. showed. Uh-huh. And three, your purchase will be added to thousands of others. All the right. goal is to spend five million dollars with oh, black businesses five million. and they show our it down. Don't you? impact with a they live camera. Are you ready to show your black receipt starting <laughs> Juneteenth? RSVP to myblackreceipt.com. Yeah. Uh, can you imagine? If someone started myWhiteReceipt.com, shop at white businesses and send in your receipt from whiteies, yeah. from a white business. Okay, you're going to have to dump this part out, Martin. <clears throat> <laughs> I'm seriously. So incredible. Are we together or apart? What is it, man? Uh, we're not together right now. Mm. We're not together. It's, un- it's really unbelievable. You keep using the word. I know. <laughs> I don't think it means what you think it means. However, there is there are glimmers of hope. There really are. And I'm I'm psyched about that. <laughs> and Glenn is gonna show some glimmers of hope. Okay. Thursday night. It's uh July day after tomorrow okay. is July second. And yeah. he's doing the big special broadcast, Restoring Hope. I think that's a tentative title. Um, but it's gonna give you some hope. 
And that's what we all need right now. And there is a pastor in Houston mm. with a message that I think will also help restore some hope. Love this Here's guy. what he had and to say. And then there's the problem <laughs> of death. If we're going, if we're going to argue logically, the argument got to hold up on both sides. Right. All the killing in our community ain't coming from white people. Thank you. Thank you. Come on, say amen if you can. We are killing one another. Our old people are scared to get out at night mm. in their own community. They're not scared of white people. They're scared of young black boys on the street. Wow. Amen. Amen. No, 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 no. All the killing that's going on ain't going on in River Oaks. Mm. It's going on in South Union. In Third Wall. Yep. On Cullen and Martin Luther King. Every street that's Stop named after my Now, he just mentioned, okay, the killing's not going on in River Oaks, which is a very wealthy neighborhood in Houston. It's it's going on in the third ward. What? Which was Keith's home for much of his stay in Houston and why he didn't like it much there. Uh, I kept telling that's him not true. move out to the suburbs. <laughs> I hated the suburbs more than the city. <laughs> Thank on. you very much. Come on. You want but he facts. wouldn't he wouldn't move because it was five minutes from work. And I just want to be five minutes from work. And that's work. only because I ran all the red lights. <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah so anyhow no no the ironic part of this story is that uh i had no trouble in two years uh, yeah in, in the ward. third ward was then, fine right then, then moved to the far western outskirts of omaha nebraska had my car stereo stolen within the first <laughs> week of living there at the apartment complex that was fun. isn't it ironic yeah. no. don't you think and and by the way and and seriously <laughs> The suburbs of which you speak in Houston. Mm -hmm. Oh, I that's had, where you also lived in the suburbs for a short time. Yeah. And somebody... It, when I moved away, uh, somebody killed grilled and their girlfriend. Barbecued the, and ate so their third girlfriend. Ward was, third Ward was paradise Wasn't compared it? to all the other places I lived. It was in your apartment complex, yeah. right? Yeah, like in the parking lot there. <laughs> so mm, what's that smell? I don't know. It smells like a burning girlfriend. <laughs> and interestingly, you never had a problem in the third world. Correct. <laughs> but I see his but point anyway, there because we yes. there were plenty of problems. Carrie and I just were lucky to escape them. Uh, all right. Let's hear the rest of this. King this is across awesome. America is riddled with crime and death in the name of a man who stood for nonviolence. Martin Luther King Boulevard everywhere. He nice. Says, yeah. The church has got to accept some responsibility. Because we in here singing and shouting on Sunday morning. Let's get out here and go tell that young black boy and that young black girl. We going to teach you how to love yourself more than somebody taught you how to hate yourself. Wow. Pull your pants up. <laughs> Take your nasty pajamas off when you get up in the morning <laughs> to go outside. Amen. I wish I had somebody to help Act like you got good sense. Talk like somebody's raising you. Wow. <laughs> A whole lot of our problems are self-inflicted. Yep. <clears throat> White people ain't breaking in my house. <laughs> I wish I had a witness here. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> Pull your pants up. Any white person who says that is ostracized, loses their yep. job, yep. drummed off of Twitter. Come on. Take off your nasty pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> that was fantastic. <laughs> and I don't... Have we found his name? I can't. I've tried so... Somebody knows. He's somebody great. tweet me. Uh, yeah, somebody must know the church and the pastor's name because he definitely deserves, in Houston. He definitely deserves credit. And you know for why that. I can't find his awesome. name? It's because it's yeah, a pastor speaking common sense right. to the black community. Yeah. And so any there's no news story about this. You know, there's no I can't find it by typing oh. in just the, the general search terms. So please help me out at Keith Malinak on Twitter. Nobody wants you to see that. No, you're not supposed to see that. Seriously, that should be that should be playing round the clock because that's something that can unite us, and that's somebody admitting that 
Yeah, not all your problems are coming from white cops, okay? Or white people in general. There's a lot of issues that we should be focused on that can really help our community. And no one will focus on them. Now, it doesn't do any good at all when white people like me talk about that. It is so refreshing and so powerful when it comes from a black pastor like him. Uh, Because otherwise, you're just a racist. Again, you can't tell black kids to pull their pants up. (gasps) How dare you? How dare you? Thank you. Uh, I don't know. It's, uh, It's outrageous to dare to say something like that. Now, coming up in a few minutes... um. I think we've run out of time in this segment, but coming up right after the top of the hour, we got to play this couple in St. Louis that went out onto their front porch and their their front yard and were defending themselves and their property because a huge mob had broken into their gated community in St. Louis. And so they decided to pick up some firearms and go outside and make sure nobody trashed their home. Well, I mean, the persecution has just begun for that yeah. couple. They're the bad guys. They're the bad guys. They're the bad guys for <laughs> defending themselves. Like, it's just, you can't make this stuff up. I mean, they didn't, did they go out and indiscriminately shoot into the crowd? Well, you'll see in a few minutes <laughs> if they did that. <laughs> How many people did they kill? How many dead bodies were piled up after their heinous act of hate? <laughs> By the way, uh, Stephen Hall, thank you for the tweet. That was Reverend Terry Anderson. Awesome. Apparently, Terry Anderson. Do we, did he know the church? No, it doesn't okay. say that. Okay. All right, Terry Anderson, pastor. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for that common sense. I'm trying to find out here. Let's see. All right, and we'll share the St. Louis couple with you coming up in a minute here on Pat Gray Unleashed. What it is? How does she always know? Because there's. So, you know, a little disturbing. And cameras everywhere, yeah. man. But, I mean, I'm watching, right? But this could be recorded. How does she know I'm here right now? It's scary. It's frightening. Sure is. Yeah. <laughs> every breath I take, every move I make, she must be watching me. Triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three. Also at Pat Unleashed on Twitter. Got some tweets here. Just two muck and fudge uh, tweets. Did Cuomo's mountain represent the nursing home deaths that he caused? <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly what it was. <laughs> From uh, John Kerry's cyber chasm. There's cyber chasms going on. When the number of black men killed in violence since George Floyd's death exceed the number of black men killed by police in the whole of last year, will we be allowed to fund the police again? <laughs> yep. Good question. Mm-hmm. Answer is, <clears throat> I doubt it. Uh, from Celt Girl, how can I tell if the business is owned by a certain race? Right. I can't tell. Does there need to be a sign? <laughs> yes. Seriously. Pastor Sam Burton tweets, in my utopia, uh, Pat will be in charge of gardening. <laughs> I need someone <laughs> in that position I can trust. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, I'd grow really delicious things like... Sour Patch Kids. That's what I would. Grow. Oh wow! Well, yeah. what kind of soil do you need for Sour Patch Kids to to properly? It's a sugar soil. Yeah. You like you just pour dump, sugar. Yeah. Dump and some then, sugar in the and then plant the Sour Patch seed. Before you know it, you got a whole box of Sour but Patch. Where, kids. where does one get Sour Patch seeds? Will you tell me? It's off a secret. The air? I don't want them to be all. You know, right now you can't get toilet paper. You you can't get uh, <laughs> bleach wipes. I'm not gonna endanger my stash of su- Sour Patch. But you'll seeds. tell me off the air, right? Yeah, we'll see. Uh, Liberty Squirt, to eliminate masks, all we need is a fourth grader to write an essay on how 300 million masks wash ashore <laughs> and kill fish and birds. <laughs> Tweet of the day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Except it was even worse than that in reality. The straw thing was 500 million per day. Ah, uh, amazing. A damn Schiffler tweets, hey, Pat, aren't receipts white? Oh, my. Mm. We've stumbled onto another racist issue. You're not supposed to issue. point that out. Huh. Scotty Sweatman, one, you send in the, my black receipt. Two, Black Lives Matter creates a registry of black businesses. Three, BLM hands off the list to Antifa to burn them all down and blame it on the heartwarming, peaceful black protesters. Mm-hmm. Uh, from Corey Pa, we need pastors like that in all the colors. Yeah. That's yeah. for sure. Uh, Pastor uh, uh, Terry Anderson from uh, Lily Grove Missionary Baptist Church. 
Nice. Houston. Uh, and from uh, Courier for Christ, does Simply Safe have a plan where 50 caliber auto turrets deploy from your yard? <laughs> Asking for that white couple in St. Louis. <laughs> Got to show you that couple in St. Louis because, man, they are they're under fire right now. Uh, because, first of all, I don't know, I think they said it was 500 protesters just came marching through their, their uh, gated community and they were a little concerned. And I think there's reason to be concerned since mm-hmm. they've burned homes down in just the past little while here, the past week, certainly. Uh, so they came out in the front of their home to protect it. Here's what happened. So he's got, looks like an AR-15. She's got a handgun. Okay. This is not... (sighs) That's not a sidewalk they're on, by the way. No, they're on their property. And her trigger finger is not so good. Yeah, so... There's a lot going on there. With Are with, you telling me you can't do that? You can't go outside and defend your home and your property? Oh, you absolutely can. Your family. Oh, and these people that say, oh, well, uh, they're, they're totally in the wrong here, going out there threatening protesters. Okay, maybe you don't aim the gun at them. And maybe, yeah. lady, you relax that mm-hmm. trigger, trigger finger. finger that is mm-hmm. it has a, and you don't walk behind mm-hmm. your husband. You don't husband. literally put your finger on the trigger till you're ready to pull and it. And she's behind her husband walking around. And, and he, look at that. He's pointing the rifle yeah. right at her. <laughs> I mean, okay. <laughs> I mean, so so let's, that's a separate issue <laughs> that needs to be addressed. was bad. They might need a, a gun safety course. Okay, but separate from that, these these innocent protesters aren't standing on the sidewalk. They're not just walking by. Show the pictures of what they did to their gate. Okay? They busted through their wrought iron gate. First of all, that's that's the street. Okay? That's yeah. the street. That's not where the protesters were. Okay? The protesters, the rioters, you see where the gate is? That's where their property line is. The rioters are in their yard, man. Look up at that little sidewalk right. that goes yeah. up toward the house. The homeowners are standing in front of their house. The rioters are out in their yard. Absolutely, they had. And look what their gate. Look at their gate. Oh, look at that. that's Histor- of their. That's their personal gate. That is their personal. They his- tore it down. H- historic iron gate. Are you kidding they me? They weren't just walking on by to get to the mayor's house. They were cutting through their yard, and with I don't know everything that's been happening on the news. Have you seen the images from around the country? Sure as hell should be out front with a gun. They had every right to be out there, and I just love it. Wait. There was a, um, I don't know. There was a, there's a great uh, uh, tweet. I don't know, uh, Petit and Nicole. And if you can check it out, um, it, where she makes the point where like, uh, yeah, I think it's the second page. Read that back and forth. This hypothetical here. This is perfect. This explains it all perfectly. Listen to this. Resistance person. Those people should be arrested for pulling out a gun. Me, but they're on their own property. The others trespassed. Resistance. So then you call the police. <laughs> Aren't the protesters who you're supporting protesting the police? You don't want us to have police. Uh-huh. So that's what we're down to, so man. They've, they've taken it into their own hands. That's what that's what you want. Which you have to do anyway, because the police wouldn't be there immediately. That's the society you want. <clears throat> they've already had damage done to their property. They got hundreds <laughs> of people walking through their property. This, this is entirely yeah. appropriate, other than their technique. They yeah. shouldn't be... Right. They shouldn't be pointing it at anyone, but the show of force Mm -hmm. is completely appropriate. But boy, there's the difference in the two years perfectly illustrated right there from that. There's the inside of their house in 2019, elegant, beautiful. 2020 out in front with the uh, loaded guns ready to go. That's a kind of an impressive house. It is a very impressive house. Looks like a hotel. I believe that's what uh, being too attorney. They're talking about disbarring them now. Like that that's what that's what these protesters want. You should disbar these two. Um, They're both attorneys. Absolutely unbelievable. You keep using the word. I don't think it means what you think it means. <laughs> oh. Also, uh Daniel, do we do we have the <clears throat> the video I just sent you ready yet? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm hearing nothing. No, no not yet. Nope. Okay. So we'll save that for a minute, but we got another uh, uh another example of mindless moronic protesters doing things that endanger their lives, but others are being blamed, not them. (laughs) 
Okay. Check this out. Okay, this is in Detroit, Michigan. A police officer in his uh, marked SUV is surrounded by a hostile mob. Check this out. Okay, they have surrounded him in the street where he was driving his vehicle. And so he drives forward to try to get them off. Oh, it climbed on his oh, looks hood. Like, looks like it worked. <laughs> it oh. Sure did work. See ya. <clears throat> We're going for a ride, bro. I mean, this is unbelievable. Here's a good safety tip. Uh, get out of the road. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Don't surround vehicles and beat on them. Do not crawl up onto the hood of a police vehicle in the middle of the road. You're going to be toppled off of it. Should we be writing this down? Is this going to yes. be on the test? Yes, write this down. You will be tested later okay. on this. All right, all right. Apparently, they busted out his back window. And when he tries to escape, the morons can't believe it. They're screaming, oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the humanity. What do you expect? Yeah. Yeah. What do you? He is surrounded by a mob of people he knows hates his guts, don't want him to be there, don't want him around, don't want him alive, perhaps. You know, and so he drives forward and stops to fling the people on his hood off of it, and then he drives forward and he does it. Actually, he actually does it pretty carefully. You could tell he's not trying to kill anybody. By the way, nobody was seriously injured in this. Uh, when you. When you see the other version from the back as he's driving away, there's not a single person on the ground. So they all got back up. <laughs> but they did get flung off of the vehicle. Uh, I don't know. It's uh-huh. yeah. uh, I, I love the protest from, like one of them said, Detroit Police Department, he tweeted this out, of course, just ran through a bunch of our protesters. Mm -hmm. Myself and 10 to 12 others were struck by this reckless driver who somehow has a badge. (laughs) And he still is breathing, too, somehow. I love this. I mean, they, they... They can dish it out, but they can't take it. Absolutely. I mean, that's what it is. So is the cop still alive? He's yes. still, okay, so he's yes, still alive. He good, that's good to know. You know and who so else? are all of them. Yeah, and, and you know who else is alive after showing uh, force there? Um, the McCloskey couple there uh, on the front uh, step right. there in St. Louis. And their property And, and, and you know who else down. is alive? That guy in Albuquerque who was attacked by the mob and shot a protester. Remember that? Out mm-hmm. in the middle of the street? Yep. And, uh, and he, by the way, they found... They, there's no charges. I mean, he was just... He was... Literally self-defense. Sure, it was shocking video, pulling out a gun and shooting someone point-blank range, which, by the way, the guy survived. But that's what works. I'm sorry, it just does. Another one of these protesters said he just floored it. No, he didn't floor it. (laughs) He went super fast. Me and a couple of my other organizers that were with me just went flinging off. (laughs) Wait, I'm sorry, you went flinging off of what? Flinging off. Why were you on the police vehicle in the first place, you freaking buffoon? He continued, we went flying off. He ran over a couple of people's arms and feet. (laughs) Okay, well, don't get into the way of a moving vehicle then. How about that? It's just, this is like putting a gun in your mouth and pulling the trigger and then being shocked that you just blew your head off. Huh, I didn't see that coming. Wow, that was weird. Also, as you can plainly see from the from many of these v- vehicles, the video uh, angles, the cop drove forward pretty carefully three or four times to get people to move so that, you know, he was no longer boxed in, surrounded, and threatened. I would definitely, if I got a screaming mob Mm -hmm. surrounding my vehicle, I'm going to feel like they want to do me harm. Mm -hmm. Also, some of these dummies, when you see the other angle, did quickly jump out of the way when they they saw him driving forward. Sure. Yeah. So, yes, it worked. When several people climb on the top of your car and 20 or 30 others are surrounding it, you can't describe that protest as mostly peaceful. As they did in this article, complaining about the police. A largely peaceful protest in Detroit against systemic racism and police brutality turned violent on Sunday. (laughs) 
Jeez. When burning buildings uh, are in the background of these protests, and it was the protesters who just set the building or the car on fire, that protest is not mostly peaceful. When innocent people are being shot or beaten, that's not mostly peaceful. For, for how many years now has the left gone stark raving nuts over President Trump uh, and what he said about Charlottesville? That there were fine people on both sides. If we describe that event as mostly peaceful, well, it was mostly peaceful. Mm-hmm. Most people didn't do anything wrong. Or if we offered that somehow, sometimes violence is necessary, like the media is trying to excuse these people, uh, y- your job would be over. Persecution would be relentless. And we'd be called animals for suggesting any of it. I mean, everything you have would be taken from you. But for some reason, on the left, they can get away with all of this because they got the mainstream media on their side. Then the means, mainstream media spins all of this stuff like that cop was at fault. There is no way on earth that cop was at fault. No. No way. By the way, the uh, McCloskey couple there in St. Louis, um, they are Democrats. Um, no way, really? Yeah, yeah. their lawyer uh, Love that. last night uh, released a statement talking about how they, um, they, uh, they say the Black Lives Matter movement is here to stay. It's the right message, and it's about time. <laughs> okay. And right. they apparently, <laughs> since we, we mentioned their attorneys, they're representing a victim of police brutality. So um, <laughs> That is amazing. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> So now will the persecution end? Because we yeah. found out. Yeah, now on that the we right know side. their background. Oh, yeah. whoa, 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 no. Whoa. I mean, we overreact. Wait a minute. I mean, that, they're fine. Hold on a minute they're here. They're just defending their problem. I mean, what do you expect <laughs> them to do? You mean they hate Trump? These are good people. Yeah. These are good, good people. I mean, you can't trust <laughs> the police, so you have to defend your own property. <laughs> Move along to the next narrative. <laughs> oh, man. Hmm. All right. Let me ask you something. If all you ever ate was celery, how healthy do you think you'd be? I'm pretty sure that's all Stu eats. We'll ask him. Isn't he doing a thing with us sometime in the near future? Oh, yeah. We need to uh, get him in here. Yeah. And just look at him. He's always sickly. He's always needing to take a vacation. Like every other week, he's on vacation. Point is, <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't be getting the nutrients you need to sustain a healthy life. That's kind of what it's like when your dog is eating the kibble dry dog food. Because that food has been sterilized, so all of the live nutrients in it have been burned out. So essentially, all your dog is getting is, you know, being filled up in his stomach or hers. Your dog also needs nutrients, just like we do. Vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, probiotics, omega oils, all contained in Rough Greens VitaSmart. I've been telling you for a while, uh, if you don't believe me, it's time to take the 14-day Jumpstart Challenge. It's $14.95, and we really believe in 14 days or less, you're going to see a big difference in your dog happier, healthier, friskier, just like they were when they were a puppy. So if you'd like to see your dog thrive again, like I have with my dog, just go to roughgreens.com slash blaze. That's R-U-F-F greens.com slash blaze. Triple A 933-93, uh, where Dave checks in from Arkansas. Hey, Dave, you're on the blaze. Hey. Hey. Morning. Morning. I uh, asked Siri this morning when you guys were talking what what about the you know Black Lives Matter, White Lives Matter, mm-hmm. and the others. Uh, Black Lives Matter. She sent me to a website for Black Lives Matter Incorporated. She never could get the question correct for White Lives Matter, and she started having a little meltdown when I asked her about Blue Lives Matter. Oh no! And then um, yeah, yeah, and and I want to challenge you guys. Um, I, I don't think you guys are being. Oh, I don't know. Maybe having stone issues, mm-hmm. kidney stones, other kinds of stones. I don't know. The uh, sports thing. Mm-hmm. You know, we know these guys are going to pull this communist theory. You know, mm-hmm. they're, they're, they're not wanting to support the hand that fed them. Right. Um, it's time we start saying, hey, fine. You know, we're not coming. We're not We're not going to support your, your uh, advertisers and... When you start calling, you know, everybody says, well, we, we shouldn't do this. We shouldn't do a boycott, blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. If we don't open our mouth somewhere, nobody's going to listen. 
That's right. That's true. I mean, we, I think you have the impression we have an argument about that. We, I don't have an issue with that. Um, I, I think that's exactly right. I think I think you want us to say that we're not going to watch sports. Is that is, is that, that right, Dave? Yeah. If oh. if the first game out of the box, these guys come out and you know kneel. Yeah. In, inappropriately. Then we yeah, need hey, to take a stand and not watch. Okay, yeah. so hold on. Let, let me see if, if, if you would be satisfied with, mm. with this, Dave. What if I watch sports, but I don't use the advertisers that bring me those sports? Is that good enough? <laughs> no, because you're still uh, no, supporting them. because the kids are throwing a temper tantrum on the field. Uh-huh. Okay. okay. Thanks, Dave. Appreciate so, it. So it's about my viewing habits, not not my exactly spending right. dollar, right? Because, see, let me tell you where I'm at. Uh I I um this this year sucks, okay, and uh, it's called the Overton window as Glenn Beck uh, taught us uh, that term mm-hmm. years ago, mm-hmm. and so I need I need a distraction in my life, <laughs> and so I will be watching these sports. But um, if it makes you feel any better, how about I just don't use any of the products that are sold on there? Is that a good is that a compromise? Different from you any like time before yeah, that's right. in <laughs> what way? No, I'm taking a stand, man. <laughs> yeah. I know, I'm I know. sorry. I need a distraction. I'm not going to lie to the audience and say, well, yeah. I'm going to make a stand and not watch any of these sports. I can't make that promise. I need sports back in my life. I'm sorry if that makes me a terrible person. It's really easy to say for people who don't like sports. <laughs> right. Just right. don't watch. Well, yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. I mean, I guess there's that. But sorry, I need sports. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm 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 willing to tell you that I'm a weak person in that respect, uh-huh. and I will be watching sports. I'm sorry. Yeah. Am I gonna Am I gonna like it? Am I gonna want to see these guys take a knee and all this stuff? No. Is it gonna anger me? Absolutely, it's gonna anger me. Am I gonna remember which players kneel? Uh, of course I am, and I'm gonna praise the ones that don't. Do you think any will not? Uh, no. <laughs> no. But see, look, I'm not I'm not paying for any sports packages. Does that help? Mm, I I don't know. I, cause see, because I'm not I'm not I'm not infusing these leagues with money, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. See, all right, cool. So well, I, by watching them, <clears throat> you're increasing their ratings, which increases their their uh, revenue flow. So yes, you're still. Supporting but what if them. what if I found out a way where they don't know I'm watching? Yeah. Well, you let me know if you can do that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> got some tweets here from David Schechter. Thousands protesting through Oak Lawn neighborhood of Dallas. Uh, it's the gay pride yeah, parade yeah. thing in Dallas. Yeah, because, you know, all the writings <clears throat> earlier this month. Check and this out. Right? Yeah. Okay. See all that social distancing? Yeah. You see that? Yeah. You see that? <clears throat> that's another one of those uh, crowds that's okay. There's a lot, too. There's a lot of people. That's a lot of pride. Look at how many people there are. Pride awesome. and BLM. Oh, so it's a combination. Oh, they combine forces. Well, there. I'll tell you this. Nobody supports this stuff more than BLM. In fact, when you go to their website and you look at their goals and their statements, mm-hmm. it's mostly about that. It's mostly about LGBTQQIA2 plus rights and privileges and support. Uh, in fact, so much so that one of their goals is to destroy the Western Nuclear Family Unit. Hmm. Huh. Huh. Fascinating, as Spock would say. Yeah, I think I'm going to go watch sports as a distraction. <sighs> yeah, I mean, we need but distractions those kind of crowd, right now. Those kind of crowds are okay, just just so we're clear. Yeah, right, and, right, right. They're not spreading COVID that way. Right. Huh. And the protests for BLM, those didn't spread any germs Correct. either. Correct. So... But if you're driving down the road and not wearing a mask... Then you're a mass you murderer. Obviously. You're a mass murderer. You've committed genocide. Yeah. You bastard. And we'll, we will make you pay for that. We will make you pay. <laughs> Don't let me catch you without a mask outside uh, of this room. Ta-da. <laughs> <laughs> and again, I for people who want to wear a mask, more power to you. I think that's great. What is interesting to me is that it's so dangerous for if I know I don't have COVID-19. Now, I know you don't, but regardless of your knowledge of that fact, I'm still not spreading the, the disease yeah. if I don't have a mask on Yeah, and I don't have the disease. Well, we, we have gone uh, hmm. from nudge to shove in just a matter of weeks with masks in this country. Yeah. I mean, look how things have changed since March. It's 
unbelievable. Yeah. I don't think it means what you think it means. Hey, is sports on yet? No. All right. Before we get back into the nightmare, uh, let me tell you about Omega XL because this is something that can really help you. If you're suffering from pain, pain brought on by inflammation, uh, Omega XL can definitely help. Certainly has helped me. I this terrible pain in my elbow. It was it was uh, so tender to the touch, and then it shot down my arm. Uh, but after a couple of weeks of Omega XL, it kicked in, and I have barely noticed it since. It just it's fantastic. It's backed by thirty years of cl- clinical research. It attacks the inflammation that's causing your pain. It calms it down, rather than just masking the pain for a little while, and then it comes right back. So if You want something that's actually going to treat the issue rather than just cover it up for a little while. Omega XL is for you. If you're suffering with aches and pains and stiffness, give it a try. Let's get you started by getting you a second bottle. When you buy the first bottle of Omega XL, they're going to throw in a second bottle for free. Visit OmegaXL.com slash Pat. That's OmegaXL.com slash Pat or 800 844 4888. Pat Gray returns. I got this from Steve. Keith was so scared when he lived in Third Ward that he ran every red light on his way to work just to be safe. <laughs> no, you remember if, if you're in Houston, Westheimer, uh, <clears throat> the red lights didn't used I to do. be timed. Mm hmm. And you can just imagine at uh, three in the morning, yeah. The, uh, stop at every light. Stop at every light. I'm not making a five minute trip into a half an hour trip. It's stupid. From Equus Limits Ten. So are the Antifa mobsters going to lose their jobs too? Oh yeah, silly me. Antifans <laughs> don't have jobs. <laughs> <laughs> pew pew one pew. Uh, maybe if more people just ran through morons standing in the middle of the road, uh, we'd have less morons standing <laughs> in the middle of the road. <laughs> Yeah. Nah, that doesn't make any sense. Rebel Libertarian. So the couple are Democrats. That explains the lack of gun safety awareness. Uh, (laughs) Very true. Uh, Exactly right. Somebody made this fun uh, movie poster there. Saving private property. (laughs) That's good stuff right there. (laughs) That's great. (laughs) From Swank Think, glad I quit watching these things when they started the kneeling. It's easy for me now. The caller is right, though. Uh, that what it's going to take for us to, uh, for us on the right mm-hmm. to actually do anything. Well, yeah, and but we don't do boycotts. <laughs> I like it. Right? Yeah, we don't do boycotts. So, uh, so there you go. Yeah. So, <laughs> and aren't we about uh, personal choice, right? Yeah. So there we are. Yeah, and yeah. you can certainly choose not to yeah. do it. If you don't want to watch sports, them. I don't blame you for a second. Mm-hmm. I don't blame you for a second. From Fauci, shut up. I love sports. But this kneeling thing, well, it's not fun anymore and kind of took the love for it away. So mm-hmm. you think sports? You think sports for the disappointment? So thank you, sports, mm. for the disappointment. There you go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Thank you, China, by the way, for the fact that there are no sports right now for us to mm-hmm. get angry at. <sighs> Jonathan Harris, I'm with the caller. I'm not watching any pro sports this year if they're kneeling, but I will. I will watch college sports since they don't play the anthem while the teams are on the field. So is it the anthem kneeling that it's I not? Guess it's so. not their attitude. It's not their tweets and their whole like all these videos that they're making and all that stuff. I'm going to say it's a combination of all of the above. The, that's what I'm going to oh, say. Okay. That's what I'm, I mean. I don't. I don't know. I'm not a mind reader, but that's just a guess. <laughs> I've seen your hernia to call her Dave. Just don't watch sports is to Pat and Keith as don't eat tainted bluebell ice cream is to Jeffy. <laughs> I had to get a Jeffy. Uh, no, that's good. I like that. To, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so great. Uh, all right. I love this story. Uh, this kind of sums up everything that's going on right now and, and tells you what it's really all about. Is it really all about racism, equal rights, No. What it's about is redistribution of wealth and uh, and Marxism. Somebody set up a guillotine 
uh, right in front of just Jeff Bezos' house. Did you see the... Not at all. Did you see it in the paper today? <laughs> did you see this? Oh, that sounds crazy. Yeah, but did you see it? What's going on? <laughs> guillotine, man. So Boy. fringe activists set up a guillotine in front of Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos' home in Washington, D.C. Oh, now they're fringe activists. Yes. Yeah, the, you're right. Instead right. of, instead of the voice of too. conscience. Got it. Okay. Exactly. One of the demonstrators said on a bullhorn, it is still exploitation, and when they become threatened and we have no vo- voice, the knives come out. Oh. Wow. Well, then. The guillotine had a sign in front of it that said, support our poor communities, not our wealthy men. The event uh, appears to have been held by a group called Abolish the Present, Re- uh, Abolish the Present, Reconstruct Our Future. Okay, it should be a, like a comma there. So abolish the present. Wow. So this was a press release, obviously written by David Hogg. <laughs> yes. Ugh. It's all this run-on stuff. Amazon works directly with police to surveil us, stoking racist fears in the name of profit. Doubling down on their union busting and mistreatment of workers, Amazon fired and racially slandered labor organizer Chris Smalls. Join us to tell Bezos enough is enough. End the abuse and profiteering. Abolish the police, the prisons, and Amazon. Mm. <laughs> Are you serious? Okay, Abolish is there, Amazon? Is there any doubt left that these people want to kill and intend on killing the rich? And, and why? Well, because they're Marxists. And that's what Marxists do. So if you're one of the young adults uh, throwing your support behind Black Lives Matter right now, just know that you're supporting a Marxist revolution in the United States of America because that's what Black Lives Matter, the organization, is really all about. And why would anyone want to end Amazon? (laughs) It has enhanced our lives in a million ways. Why would you (laughs) end Amazon? You don't want a good quality of life in, in this country? I can't. If you're a Marxist, this. you want everybody suffering equally. You don't want you don't want uh-huh. uh, free prime delivery. <laughs> you order something at one o'clock, by two o'clock it's at your doorstep. Uh, uh, seriously. Seriously. Yeah, time for that to end. Let's get rid of that. That's a good idea. <laughs> I, and you got to hate the guy who brought it to us because he made some money. And these it. are the people who are that are complaining about Amazon are sitting around on their phones. And if and if they order uh, something on Amazon, they go, "Oh wait, I can't get this today. I gotta yes. I gotta wait till tomorrow." Oh come on, that's too long. That's the same people that are gonna be complaining about that. Oh, there's no doubt about that. There's, there's no doubt. And how many times have they ordered Amazon products? From their Apple iPhone. Right. Jeff and Bezos, they hate all these people and all these companies. Bezos should be the richest man in the world. Yeah, he's... He should be. That 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 company and what they do and, and how convenient they are and what they bring us. You know... I mean, the, 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 the benefits are endless with that company. He should be rewarded for that innovation. Like 21 years ago, when Dean came and came up with uh, Segway, and we didn't know what it was at first, and all the hype was surrounding this big announcement, what's he going to announce? And... It's going to absolutely change the way cities are built. It's mm-hmm. going to yeah. it's going to reorganize our civilization. Mm-hmm. It was such an absolute dud nothing burger mm-hmm. that we became skeptical. Then in uh, in the 2000s, Amazon which actually already existed but they were just basically an online bookstore at the time. Mm-hmm. Amazon did change the way we live. And so did Apple. Apple and Amazon actually did those things. They they changed the way we do everything. And it's great. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. And you know how Jeff Bezos started his company? His is how what is it worth today? I don't know how many billions of dollars oh, it's yeah. worth. I think he started with a loan from his parents. Yeah. So Antifa loser, why don't you stop mooching off of your parents and living in your parents' basement, ask them for a, a loan, and go and make something of yourself. Look what can happen in America. Join us, all right? Maybe we'll be singing your praises 20 years from now. No, no, you want to destroy everything else that's been built up. Love it. Plus, I got another stimulus check to look forward to because. Oh yeah, that's coming. So President yeah, we get Trump some free says, money coming. Oh good. Oh. oh more good. checks yeah. are on the way. Yeah. Oh, let's just print some yeah, more. That's great. Mm-hmm. 
So we got that going for us. So you can still live in your parents' basement, just get a thousand bucks every month. That's yeah. that's and awesome. Then, what more do you need yeah. than that? And, and you've got Republican Senator McSally who wants to pay us to take a vacation every year for the next three years. Excellent idea. Oh, it's an excellent idea. This is a good time, right? Yeah. It's yeah, a good it time. Yeah. How much? How much are we in debt right now? Have we checked? Uh, oh, hardly anything. Have we checked within the last five minutes? Um. What they're admitting to, I think, is twenty five right, trillion. Right, what they're admitting to twenty five trillion. Yeah, and that's of course uh, way know, off. It's not a static number there. Uh, or yeah, twenty six point three two five. Yeah, mm-hmm, it's good. It's good. Tick 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 tick. Oh, so they're admitting to twenty six trillion now. Uh huh. Because you know, by the end of the year, it's going to be over thirty trillion. I mean, if they're honest, yeah. it's well over thirty. Yeah, trillion. because of the outlays. Right, the stuff that, that we've promised way mm-hmm. down the line. That don't, I mean, that, that number is probably closer to 100 trillion. So right now, your uh, debt uh, uh, per citizen is right at 80000 per taxpayer, 211000 But you should just check on this clock every day. Just check in once a day. It's fine. Why? Nobody cares. Because you like to see numbers move? Yeah, nobody cares. Meaningless numbers move. No one cares. Paid to take a vacation, Pat. Republican senator's plan. Mm-hmm. That'll keep us going. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. You're right. Nobody cares. When it comes to spending, seriously, mm-hmm. no Democrats and no Republicans. And you wonder how I can tolerate the kneeling in sports. Yeah. Because I need a distraction. That's why. <laughs> and just don't turn it on until yeah. after the yeah. uh, after the national anthem. What time's kickoff? Ta-da! I'll watch it five minutes That's later. That's when I will tune yes. in. Yeah, it'll be perfect. <laughs> uh, all right. Triple eight nine hundred. 3393 and at Pat Unleashed on Twitter, the newsroom uh, areas where all of these stories are coming out about how racist we are, how non inclusive we are, how not diverse the United States is. Newsroom employees are less diverse than U.S. workers overall. (laughs) Again, the hypocrisy, you have to love it. (laughs) You just have to love it. Uh, They're more likely to be white and male than other U.S. workers overall. There are signs, though, of a turning tide. Sure. Mm -hmm. Younger newsroom employees show greater racial, ethnic, and diversity, gender diversity, than their older colleagues. Uh, More than three-quarters of newsroom employees, 77%, those who work as reporters, editors, photographers, videographers, uh, in newspaper broadcasting and internet publishing, are non-Hispanic whites. Mm. Mm. So, so point mm. is that we're going to have protests now in front of uh, newsrooms. <laughs> yes, yeah, right? so of course. And in front of CNN. New York Times. And uh, so, well, CNN did have that. They actually did. <laughs> That's yeah. true. Yeah. They actually did have an issue. Of course, of course, the justification for that, which is factually accurate, is there's an Atlanta police department inside that building, and the protesters oh. were just trying to get to that. Okay, well, whatever. Whatever. <sighs> Good times. Uh, listen, let me take 60 seconds to tell you about real estate agents I trust. Uh, if you are trying to sell your home, that could be a real challenge. You certainly don't want to just do it yourself. For sale by owner, and then you get nobody coming through your house. Real estate agents I trust. We have the best agents in all of the markets spread throughout the country. And these are the people who understand what's going on right now in uh, the real estate business for instance if you need your house painted the inside needs to be painted you need to update your kitchen or a bathroom or whatever the case may be they can guide you through this process because they really know what they're talking about real estate agents i trust it's glenn's company and when you have the kind of agents who work with us working for you you can rest assured that you're going to be in good hands the same goes for buying a home when you choose your agent through real estate agents i trust you've just partnered yourself with a competitive winning machine and a team of people who are going to see it through to the end for you. Real Estate Agents I Trust. The name pretty much says it all. Go to realestateagentsitrust.com. That's realestateagentsitrust.com. Pat Gray is unleashed. Uh, that nauseating, nauseating voice will uh, join us tomorrow in person. <laughs> <laughs> so we're pretty psyched about that. Yeah. Hey, uh, strippers are apparently angry right now. You don't want to see that. You don't want to see angry strippers. <laughs> I'm not sure why, we, but you don't. Um, here is, oh, I guess, what their beef is. Oh, yeah, in Portland. Uh, uh, I'm just so booty. 
No justice, no, justice, no, no booty. booty. The stripper strike is everybody coming together. <laughs> discrimination against black dancers and dancers of color. <laughs> but we're pretty much tired as a collective of having no rights as far as being independent contractors, but having no say when you get to schedule your shift. <laughs> the truth of the matter okay. is black dancers network oh, with each other very well. Sure. And unfortunately, we know where we're allowed to dance, where we're even allowed to audition and where we aren't. Uh -huh. You know, you get through the audition process and then it's like no call back, you know, but then you send your other dancer friend in there, you know, and she's maybe she's white and she gets hired, she gets called back that same day. Uh -huh. And it just, it goes further than that. Oh, and that's no. really why we're striking because it's a known thing that nobody talks about and it's, an, it's, a, it's yeah. a problem. It's a problem, man. Uh, no, out of all the problems we have. No justice, no booty. Now it's strippers. I mean, look, if, if you don't like your schedule, I, I suspect that she's probably getting scheduled during the night? No, during the day. Oh, really? I mean, look at You it. would think so. She's a day. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Is that a thing that yeah. the think, good ones are? Yeah, I think the more attractive night. ones get the night stuff. And so she's getting the day shift. <laughs> I, I was educated earlier on this. Wait, uh, are, are you saying she wasn't attractive? I'm saying there was absolutely nothing huh. attractive in that entire package that we just what? aired. Uh, I can see why they would be striking. Do we have a like a still photo of that? Sure, just, just run it again. I don't care. Pull First the, of all, how do you the, know she's wearing a mask? Pull the volume down she and just be press quite play. Lovely. You, quite. You can pause this anywhere, anywhere in this package, and I will stand by what I said. No justice, no boot. No justice, no boot. Look at that. Oh yeah. You got. <laughs> what, what do you want? You want to comment on anything you're seeing here? Anything? No, I don't. Yeah. Uh -uh. Look at she's got a mask on. We don't. Rihanna and, and then Sis Trunk. <laughs> sis Trunk. What her her name is Sis Trunk, which is first does that of all, mean she is uh, cisgendered? I don't. I don't know. I don't know. But wow. Uh, you can again hit pause anywhere Pat wants you to. Oh, look at those like twelve inch heels on her. Mm -hmm. That's great. Oh, there's Coco Green. <laughs> she's a Portland dancer. Yeah, she's a Portland. Uh -huh. Dancer. I'm sure she's great. On strike. So they want to set down. their own or, uh, hours, apparently. Yeah. And uh, that's understandable. It's understandable because <laughs> you always want the prime uh, shifts where you get the most tips, sure. right? Um, huh. All right. 2020. What a year. Triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three. Also, uh, did you notice earlier this week that, that uh, I guess it was over the weekend, I think, that President Trump actually did jump over to parlor i think he still has his twitter right he oh. still has his twitter account okay but he is also now on parlor mm -hmm. so i guess everybody needs to jump over and i guess we're getting some questions about whether oh, or not we're on yeah. parlor oh there's a big push and you've probably <laughs> seen this since you're mr twitter you get on mm -hmm, there and you mm -hmm. see everybody asking yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah I, I was able to add a profile picture I'm, on parlor yeah baby steps oh, okay so i got logged in so that's what we're doing we're taking baby steps yep. this. i finally figured out how to get logged in <laughs> yeah and then i took a profile picture that for some reason was sideways oh and i was like why is this sideways so then i took the picture again mm -hmm. you know and uh again like you said baby steps logged in profile picture at keith malinak we'll see you over okay. there so you got facebook you got instagram you got snapchat you got Twitter, uh -huh. uh, Parler, and now you got Parler and MySpace. <laughs> MySpace, you got MySpace. Though. Fortunately, that's hip. Uh, that old dinosaur is not necessary. Pinterest, but everything else. Pinterest, Pinterest. You're big on Pinterest. Oh, I hear. Right? I'm sure. Yeah, huge, <laughs> huge. Oh, I can't snap enough pictures of myself and post them online. I, I mean, I can't even keep up with myself and all the pictures I take of me. So. <laughs> It's really hard. I mean, it's he's really sitting hard. over there taking selfies around the clock, y'all. He's Nonstop. He, he's got he's got a bag. YouTube. Of, we forgot YouTube. YouTube. Yeah, he's got a bag of uh, of Sour Patch Kids mm -hmm. sitting next to him. So he's taking the one hand. And he's, and Look at he's this got, bag. And this he's, is one of the greatest bags of right. of anything on the face of the planet. Right. And and those Pure apparently gold. Natalie sent those after growing the Sour Patch Kids from seeds herself. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, in her garden, Sour Patch Garden. Uh, but yeah, and, and he just sits over there and he's mm -hmm. taking selfies while non -stop. shoving non -stop. Sour Patch Kids in his face. By the way, if you want to celebrate with something more substantial even than Sour Patch Kids, uh, like a cookie, like the most delicious cookie you've ever tasted uh, in the history <laughs> of your life, go to scrumptiouscookie.com. Scrumptiouscookie.com. Because uh, we're having a big uh, 
big sale for Fourth of July. Oh. On the chocolate chip cookie, the all American chocolate chip, ten percent off your order. So uh go to scrumptiouscookie.com on that. All American chocolate. All American chip. chocolate chip huh. cookie. Not, you know, not like foreign. that wasn't invented yeah. in Russia, in the Soviet Union. It wasn't invented in China. No, it's an American product, and we invented it here. Good. So, Good. you know, uh, there's a uh, something else that's <clears throat> very American besides, say, the chocolate chip cookie at scrumptiouscookie.com, but also you're setting up some stupid animal video. Right also, now. the uh, I'm going to beat you dead. The if American you say Eagle, it. don't do it. Who uh, went for a little flight recently and uh, had a passenger? Look at this video, Pat. This. Eagle is carrying a shark. You know that's real, right? Look at this. See you later, shark. That's Pico. That's how Pico gets across Florida, by the way. Look that's at a, this. That's CGI. Watch, watch the shark tries to get away. <clears throat> Struggles. For a second there, you feel Does bad it? for the shark. Look at that. Uh, flopping. flopping, see him flopping, she says. Yeah. What do you uh, think of that? That was a tiny little shark. How big was that? Like a foot long shark? No, not a couple feet long. <laughs> I mean, you set it up like it's a great white or something, and it's snatched out of the ocean. Well, I'm sorry that, you know. <laughs> it was not exactly a great white. You got me on a technicality there, but, you know, whatever. It's, it's still, tiny little baby shark. It's still shark. fascinating. That was fa- it was a baby shark. It was at least it was a, a teenager shark. Yeah, it was a baby shark. Uh, we're totally posting that later. Do it, yeah. I mean, stuff. people probably want to see it. Yeah, and you can go to at Pat Unleashed on Twitter, but not yet Parlor. <laughs> but soon. Coming soon, maybe We'll see. Uh, well, you got a timetable? <laughs> I don't. What's I don't. That? I don't have a timetable. Okay. <laughs> um, the top child advocate at the United Nations funded charity. Oh, this, this is, is good stuff. God. Peter Newell. He was. Uh, he just pled guilty to sexually assaulting a boy. Oh, that's, that's... a children's rights activist. Yeah. Jailed for six years and eight months for sexually abusing a boy. In the 1960s. Mm. Wow. And he's only been caught now? That just tells you that he's been for, what, 50 years now? Yeah, on the loose, probably. Well, and in the system that leads to a position of protecting kids. That is. At the United Nations, of course. Unbelievable. You keep using the word. I don't think it means what you think it means. Peter Newell was the former coordinator of the Association for the Protection of All Children charity. So news of his imprisonment comes amidst uh, warnings that predatory pedophiles are exploiting the AIDS sector after the uh, 125 British charity workers were accused of sexual abuse in 2017. Jeez. 77-year-old from Woodgreen, North London, sentenced last month to... Well, six years and eight months. He admitted five indecent and serious sexual assaults on a child under 16. He admitted it. Okay. Congratulations, UN, on finding just but the no, best people. That's good. Just the finest people. to. It's like when they made uh, Libya and Iraq the head of the UN Security Council mm-hmm. a few times. Or the, the Human Rights Council. Yep. <laughs> it is the most worthless organization on this planet. Uh it's, it's a place where wow. tyrants and despots go to uh, have a voice and be on equal footing with um, yeah. good countries. Indeed. All right, 888 900 Use that number tomorrow. In the meantime, check out the, the unbelievably impressive video of the eagle swooping in. Yeah, it's an adolescent eagle, let's be and honest. And just plucking out of the ocean a great co- white shark. College-age shark thing had to be 15 20 feet long and weigh a thousand two thousand pounds on the blaze radio network